Everybody, it's Tyler here at the first in Michigan Championships, checking in team number 107, Team Robotics. This team already has a win under their belt. As we're recording this, the number four ranked team going into a line selection. Talk more about this robot, by the way. I have James, Lily, and Josh. And I love this machine. Very open, uh, what they have on here. A lot of teams, you know, we see the compact stuff going in. This team here has done a very clean design as they've gone through. I really appreciate that. Of course, we'll be talking about their intake uh, into their indexer and shooter and their climber. Let's find out more about this team coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Well, welcome, welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Striker Careers. First alumni and mentors are making Striker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Striker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Let's start on your intake. Speaking about this, uh, you guys got a really uh, pretty beefy intake, I'd say, on this. I'd love yeah. to hear more about that design process and anything you might have changed or iterated throughout your competitions, too. Okay, so we made a, a big focus on making our robot as simple and elegant as possible this year. We went through a lot of different iterations with our intake, starting with different cardboard and plywood prototypes, and it eventually uh, became this final product here. So, Lily, if you want to put the ball underneath, we can kind of show we have these uh, three and a half inch compliant wheels that suck the ball up. It goes into these, and these mechanical wheels center it right into here. So as this ball comes in, this goes into what we call the bobsled. It gravity feeds right into this small indexer right here, which is those Colson wheels, which get really great grip on our cargo. And then as our intake comes up, this surgical tubing right here keeps the cargo inside our, inside our bobsled, as well as helps feed it by providing pressure onto the ball. When we're ready to shoot, this indexer moves it right into our shooter where we have dual Colson flywheels driven one-to-one -one by Falcons, which go right here into our shooter. We have a hood on, a, on the bottom of our shooter that keeps constant compression on the ball so we can get the nice no-spin shots. That was something we did a lot of prototyping on in the beginning of the build season. We realized with, with our uh, upper hub, we really didn't want any backspin. That really helps us get a soft touch and limit our bounce outs. So it comes right through these Colsons right here and out and into the upper hub. We found we're, which way is it coming that. out, this way? Yeah, so it comes out right, right over here. Sure. And rather than having any actuation of, of, the, uh, of the actual module here, we can just change the speed of the Colson's and that gives us as much rage as we need. We can shoot from realistically anywhere inside the launch pad. How about, how about a preferred spot though? Do you have a preferred space you go from? Yeah, so we try to shoot right on the edge of the tarmac. That's been really, uh, really good for us. When we line up correctly, we uh, make all of our shots, which has been really good. Let me ask you from a cargo acquisition standpoint on there, uh, on the field itself, uh, what are you doing to like when you, to try to find cargo on the field? So one of our main strategies as far as finding cargo has been kind of going in this circular pattern around around the field. When we're the, the main scoring robot in an alliance, we go in this circle around the hub, yeah. and then we go out of that circle pattern and we find our cargo. And that keeps us not starving ourselves out by going in that as the hub naturally distributes it all throughout the field. That's been really successful for us in finding cargo effectively, and we can just suck it up with our intake, which has worked really well. Let's move on to your climber. Lily's going to talk a little bit more about that. And I know right now as we're filming this, you're in process of fixing it as well, too. So we're not going to do a full demo. But, uh, you know, I watched your last match. Your climb is really efficient as well, too. So I'd love to hear just about the process going into that climb. Yes. So for our climber, we have these polycarbonate hooks. So they, they have some move in them, which has been very good because that has been very good at correcting air for if we hit the bar a little bit off, it usually corrects, it self-corrects and puts us on it really good. So this main arm right here, it goes up and down and it has enough travel to get it onto the bar with these hooks that are offset. It also travels back farther across to reach back up to the bar. So we've been going traversal in about 23 seconds, which has been made possible by us automating our climb because it is a really complicated climb with lots of movements up and down and back and forward. We decided to automate it so that it's very consistent and constantly, and it's accurate. So that's a lot about our fun. Let's talk about uh, programming a bit more, in particular autonomous as well too. I want to hear what you guys are doing for that, because definitely a little bit unique, and then I know we're going to show a little bit on the uh, computer as well too, of what you got going on. Yeah, for sure. So we took a very unique approach this year to our Auton. We have a swerve drive base, as you might have already seen. Um, and rather than going the traditional route of doing um, some sort of path weaver or um, pre-recorded stuff like that. We decided to go for more of a pre-recorded, as I just mentioned. Um, 
we took a much more of a record and playback so we can actually go out onto the field and record how we want to um, perform our Auton as sure. well as uh, replay it in, in matches. So uh, I know you have a CSV file up on their screen. Yeah, Can you just sure. talk to me a little about what it, what it is and how you're using that data? Yeah, for sure. So um, whenever we record a record and playback, uh, we record our X, Y, and Z variables. So we tend to shift around, and you'll see that our first, our second three numbers are going to be um, those values. And then we record our gyroscope angle, which helps us correct. Um, and for a little bit of error, uh, we also record whether our intake is up or down, which helps us uh, replay that as well as we record our shooter speeds and our intake speeds. Well, 107, appreciate you taking time here. Like I said, as we're recording this, currently uh, ranked number four going into the line selection, so wish you best of luck on that. Uh, and uh, looking forward, of course, to a championship berth as well, too. So good luck the rest of the way, and thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First, alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.